really to get cheers from the crowd, it was really just a plug. Um, but it's, some of these things come from, uh, some of these insights come from spending time down there, for sure, if not all of them. Uh, so without further ado, um, my quarterly sales projection by region. Uh, uh, here we see, I'm just kidding. Seriously, we're going to get on to the good stuff. Um, <laughs> You may know this guy. He's in the front row. Uh, that's as far as close as you should get to them. You get to him. Um, all right, all right. Getting, getting serious. I might get a little serious. Um, and I, and I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to uh, cry or laugh or, or what I'm going to do tonight. I've, I've had one person promise to cry if I cry. Um, I don't know if I'll take them up on that. But um, I just wanted to, first of all, start with a, a story. It's kind of strange because I'm talking about time, but I just want to talk about a, a story. Um, just a couple days ago, uh, I was at Olympic, uh, Olympic Plaza. We were having a general assembly there. And uh, I ran into somebody that had uh, been camping there with us, um, who was actually there to meet, to meet me. Her name was um, Borshan. And she's uh, she's a 50, 50 something year old, I would say, somewhere in that range. And she's a Polish immigrant, uh, and she lives on the street. I'm not sure if she lives rough, um, uh, but she ended up camping with us, and, and not really taking part in Occupy per se, but she took advantage of our community, uh, took advantage of the opportunity to live in our community and and uh, have and use one of our tents. Um, and she was always on the sidelines. Um, but, but to talk to her was, to hear her voice and her wisdom, uh, to me, was to hear my, my mother speaking, to hear my father speaking, to hear a Syrian speak, to hear a Tibet speak, to hear all humanity speak. Hers was a struggle. <laughs> Fuck you! Don't do that! Don't <laughs> cry! <laughs> Hers was the struggle of all humanity. And she was, it was powerful. And I moved every time I talked to her. And she was there to ask me for a place to live, if we had a place to live. And it struck me that then that, uh, you know, and we, we do. We live in a house of 14 people. The Ramsey house is 14 people right now. We have kind of an intentional community going there. Uh, similar to the uh, Evolver House, you know? uh, and, and we do have that opportunity, perhaps, to house someone there. Um, but it struck me that we're out of time. That there's opportunity for us, lost opportunity, really, for us to house people, for us to look after the world, for us to look after each other, and we're missing it because because we're stuck in an economic system. We're stuck in a civilization, in a society that doesn't value um, the embrace of humanity. We're, we're stuck in consumption. We're stuck um, going to our jobs day to day, jobs that don't mean anything to us in order to produce more goods that don't mean anything to us. We're stuck in so many ways, and we're wasting time there, all of our time, and it's precious. Um, so we have that opportunity and a need, perhaps, to act now. This is our civilization, and it can be a full farmer's market, full of healthy produce. It can be a clear cut in our watershed. <laughs> it can be, uh, sorry, that was just supposed to be the atmosphere, clean air. I, I screwed up my business, I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn you, triples. 
Um, you press the engage button. Engage. <laughs> <laughs> and then I take away all the fun. Right now, there are Syrians. There are Syrians that are dying. There are Egyptians uh, that are uprising. Uh, there are Tunisians that have rebelled and created revolution. There are tar sands that are destroying our earth, our water, our air, our indigenous people, our culture, our economy. There are economic systems that lay waste to entire continents and peoples. And so this is what we're facing. And so we're out of time. I don't know what else. I don't know what else to say. That we have the opportunity to do this, to rise up, to take take part, to come down to the streets, to rebel, to stop what we're doing in our offices, in our bars, to do this outside. What we're doing right now. Let's take that out to the streets. Let's do this. This is cool. Thing. <laughs> sorry, these are gathers, sorry. This is what we are right now, we are gatherers. And we do it at great cost. But this is what we should be, gatherers in the streets, doing this. We're gathering now, you're a bunch of beautiful people. Um, I should have prepared better for the speech. <laughs> um, May 12th. May 12th, we take to the streets again. And it's necessary for all of you to come out there. That the answers that we wonder, we just had an election, and that was not democracy, it was anything but democracy. Once again, we have the same party in power. We don't even have a progressive voice. We don't even have the voice of reason, of soul, of compassion, uh, anywhere represented in that election. That we don't have what we need to exist and to continue as humanity. And so May 12th is our opportunity to come out once again. And I'm here to ask you folks, and I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what May 12th looks like. I don't know if we're ready for that. I don't know if the rest of, the rest of Calgary or the rest of Canada is ready to take to the streets. And perhaps they're not. But it's going to be up to all of us to reach out to the Christians, to the Muslims, to the Unionists, to the workers, to the Tibetans, to the Syrians, to the Palestinians. It's going to be up to us to build bridges between all of them and bring them down to the street so that we can talk to them, they can talk to us, so we can have discussions, so we can have humanity, so we can embrace them, and we can embrace a better future. It's going to be up to us. Where are we going to be on May 12th? We're out of time. I'm with you, brother! Yeah. I hope to make each one of you my friend. Thank you.